ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Jala here for Forever Football DRFC, your Dogs Drovers fan channel. It is a match preview today because upcoming is the MK Dons match at the Keepmoat Stadium. It's going to be a very interesting contest because... Yeah, I'm going to go into all that in a little bit. But before we get started, please like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell so you never miss a YouTube video. And let's get straight into this because this is probably the hardest video I've got to do because today might actually be the day for the first time in a long time I've predicted a defeat. But more, on, I'm still deciding in the back of my mind, but more on that uh, later on. But, um, so looking at the opponents... <laughs> of course we had to face NK Dons, didn't we? I don't think they've won at the Keepmo in a good few years. In fact, I don't think they've won at the Keepmo ever. Um, and now we've only won one game all season. They're scoring for fun every week. And of course, they come to the Keepmo. Perfect timing. Perfect, perfect, perfect timing. <laughs> you couldn't write it, could you? Uh, but I'm going to go through my obviously predicted, predicted scoreline and predicted uh, team later on. But I, I, I thought I'd spend this first part just to share with you exactly what's being done on the pitch because we do have the official season stats so far. Obviously, we don't need to see the table. We are four points from all get up from the f first nine games of the season. What we need to look at is team statistics, because this is the most damning statements of our season so far. We have scored, in nine matches, four goals. It was the one against Plymouth. There was one against um, Wigan. One against Wimbledon. And the one in the 1-0 win against Morecambe. We've conceded 17 goals. 17 goals in nine games. Not good at all. Um, the goals per game is 0 0.4. Our goal conversion is 10%. We've had 0 out of 1 penalty goals and 0 out of 1 free kick goals. Four goals out of uh, 4 out of 48 goals inside the box. None have been outside the box, so all four of them have been inside the box. Three left foot goals, one header goal. And by the way, these stats are all sofa score, by the way. We've hit the woodwork once. We've had no counter-attacks. Can I just mention that? No counter-attacks. Um, now, in terms of big chances per game, 0 0.6. Big chances missed per game, 0 0.4. Total shots per game, 4.7. Shots on target, 2.1. Shots off target, 2.6. Successful dribbles per game, 3.7, and corners per game, 4.6. A total average ball possession of 48.7%. That's under 50%. Richie Wellens' style is exciting possession attacking football, and known as Wellens' ball, and yet we're under the 50% mark. Not looking good. In terms of the accuracy per game, it's 235, so that's 67.2% on passes. Accuracy in our own half is 80.4%. Accuracy in the opposition half is 55%. 38.3% accurate long balls and 20.8% accurate crosses. This is the defending bit now. This is the defending bit. Clean sheets, 2. 2. The 1-0 win against Morecambe, the 0-0 draw against Pompey. 1.9 goals conceded per game, 13.6 tackles per game, interceptions per game, 6.8. Clearances per game, 20.3. Saves per game, 3.8. Errors leading to a shot, 1. Errors leading to a goal, 1. Penalties committed, 3. Penalty goals conceded, 2. No clearance off the line and no last man tackles. No red cards, 2.2 yellow cards per game, 11.1 fouls per game, 167.0 possession lost per game. Aerial duels won 42.4%, ground duels won 50.7%, and duels won per game 46.7%. The stats are damning. They really are damning. And, you know, let's look at that. The 17 goals conceded. 17 goals conceded this season. So, two against Wimbledon, two against Sheffield Wednesday, one against Accrington Stanley, so that's five. 
Two against Stoke City in the Cup, that's seven. Rotherham makes it nine. And then another six against Rotherham makes it 15. Uh, two against Wigan, that's seven. I'm guessing they're just calling it, I'm just. I'm guessing they're just looking at league, sorry. I count all the cups, so um, yeah, it's just league. So we've got Wimbledon two, Sheffield Wednesday two, Accrington Stanley makes that five um, to add to the two twos. Um, so that's five overall. Rotherham makes it seven. Then it's 13 with another six from Rotherham. Uh, two from Wigan. Um, two from Plymouth. Um, that's 17. And then, in fact, the, the, the six from Ipswich to make it 23, I believe. So uh, it just gets even worse, doesn't it? I mean, this, this, I'm guessing the defensive stats on Sofa score wasn't updated. Uh, um, I'll just run it through another source as well, just while I'm here. But, it, I mean, we've conceded more goals than we ever needed to. And, you know, it, it's, it's it's just not on. It really, really isn't. No, it just, no it's, 17, it's 17 goals conceded. So, uh, yeah, that does include the uh, Ipswich goals. Um, so, yeah, it, it feels... It, it, I mean, I'm so embarrassed that I can't even get my maths right. It's so, it's so appalling at the moment. Um, overall then, I don't know, it should be said that we, um, I, don't even, I can't even put any positives overall in our performance, it's, it, it doesn't feel good right now, it really, really doesn't, um, I feel like, I don't know when the light at the end of the tunnel's coming, like, is it going to be too late when it comes or not? I don't know, but I, I'm good. I struggle to see getting. I struggle. I struggle to see us getting anything out of this. MK Dons have not won at the keep out. Tomorrow could be the day. It could be the day. I'm not even lying to you. Um, but anyway, enough with the depressing statistic. Let's go into a bit of optimism with our team selection. But let's be honest, there's no real optimism from that either. Bostock and Galbraith's back, that's a positive. There's optimism in that, but Anderson 50-50, you know, depending on the concussion protocol. Joseph Olowu ruled out completely of this game. We'll get a further diagnostic from what happens there. Um, <laughs> I don't know. So I've gone with my predicted team, my realistic predicted team. Dahlberg in goal, back four of Tommy Rowe and Callum Noll at full backs, and then it's probably going to be a centre-back pairing of Roe, Sean Williams, and the teenager Ben Blythe, because let's face it, it was between Ben Blythe or playing Brendan Horton at centre-back, and there's no way I'm playing a left-back out of position. I would rather play a young centre-back in there, and that's saying something, because we've got no other choice. Um, unless, unless we made an emergency free agent signing again, uh, before tomorrow's game, then there's no chance. Absolutely no chance. But maybe Wellens puts his faith in Ben Blythe. I mean, he did put in... When it, when he played, I think it was against Stoke City in the Carabao Cup, even though we were 2-0 down already, when he was playing in that game, he was actually a decent player. So I think Ben Blythe could do a job there. But again, with the amount of goals that MK Gons have scored this season, they're going to be coming at us full throttle. And we've got to deal with that. We've got to deal with that, and I don't think we can. So Ben Blythe's just going to have to be the best we can do in this situation. Um, uh, midfield three of Ben Close, Ethan Galbraith and John Bostock. I think other people would have put Matt Smith over Ben Close after his performance against Ipswich on Tuesday, but you know Ben Close is still part of the way we play, and I think just give Ben Close that one more game. On the wings, I've got Huwula and Vilka. I've put Chikur on the bench. I've got Dudu up front. I think that's the best way we can structure that front three at the moment until John Taylor and Virgirio Canabiri comes back. It's going to have to be Jordi Huwula, Joe Dudu and Rodrigo Vilka. Um, and I mean, apart from apart from John Bostock, no one else in that squad survives from last season. And, you know, we have to take that into account at some at some points during this season. There were games where I was looking back on it thinking, you know, we, we still got, you know, I think the first day of the season, you know, we debuted all but one of the squad in the starting eleven. So there was excuses and reasons to take out of some of the performances. You know, we were on top in certain moments, but we just couldn't get the result, couldn't get scoring, couldn't get firing, etc., etc. 
I think the last couple of games, the last two, three, maybe even four games, has been absolutely no excuses. The last couple of games have been no excuses. And this is another one, there's no excuses. If we lose, if we get battered again, no excuses. And I know the comment section is going to be firing with this particular question now. Are you, am I, am I, from a football DRFC, am I Wellens in or Wellens out? It's a hard one. I'm not going to lie, it's a hard one because on the one hand, if he's given the right investment, he could rebuild this team. Over the next two or three transfer windows, he could rebuild this team. But on the other hand, can any manager, no matter who it is, no matter what kind of history they've got as a player with the club, as a manager, if we lost again by a significant scoreline, could we take that as fans? I don't, th I don't think they can. You know, on the one hand, give him the right tools and he'll rebuild this squad and rebuild this club. But on the other hand, you've got two questions. Now, I think it's two questions that all the, well, not all the fans, but at least some of the fans, if not most of the fans, will be asking. And have been asking for the last few years with any manager. Has he got the tools? And can he save the sinking ship? Is it too little too late? Are we sleep? I think Into the Empty Net titled it in their article a few weeks ago. Are we sleepwalking into League Two? And at the moment, yes, we are. And to be perfectly honest, I, t I don't know when the light at the end of the tunnel's coming. Is it too little too late? Maybe it could be. Do we deserve it? No. And there's been many criticisms of the board. There's been many criticisms from fans. The board have said that they've listened to the criticisms. But the way they've answered them a couple of times has been really contradicting. I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat it i'm not going to stand here and say that but there have been a couple of times where the board's answers have contradicted or uh sugarcoated the fans questions you know like for example when they asked a question about deadline day and baldwin when if we signed a striker on deadline day no fan would be saying it no fan would be saying all this stuff well you never knew that until we signed a striker Yes, we tried with Aiden Barlow and the paperwork was Sunderland, uh, not Aiden Barlow, Aiden O'Brien, and the paperwork was Sunderland's fault. Yeah, I get that. But we should have got Will Grigg on the money, on the button. We should have convinced him as much as we can that, about this project and this vision. But again, we let a target go. I was probably going to do a daily reports today, but I thought I'd speak about this a little bit now while we're previewing this game because I think because because I've seen a couple of things like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say where I saw it but I saw one fan comment on something I can't remember where it was on whether it was on Facebook or something it might have just been one fan it might not even happen but you know it, it was still an interesting thing to read and someone comment uh, one fan commented on a post saying 1 p.m. East Stand, we're going to protest outside the stand at 1 o'clock on Saturday, tomorrow. And is that where fans are at now? Is that where is that where the fan base, well, some of the fan base at least, are that, is that where they are now? Protesting against the owners. If this happens tomorrow, you can bet your lucky backsides I'm filming it. Because at the end of the day... I am not an official Doncaster Rovers employee. I give every fan a voice. I give Baldwin in as a voice. I give Baldwin out as a voice. If they've got an opinion, they can say it. In a family-friendly way, they can say it. So if there's a protest happening at 1 o'clock outside the East Stand tomorrow, I'm going to talk to the Baldwin outers and get their perspective as to why they are what they are. And get their opinions and get them on the channel because at the end of the day, they've got an opinion like I have, like other people have. And I'm sure they have their reasons. And if there is a protest at one o'clock outside the East Stand about the owners, and if any fans watching this that is going to that outside the East Stand, and they're like, oh, I've got my, I've got my structured reasons as to why I don't like the owners and want them to go. Find me tomorrow and come to me. And I'll let you express your views, because that is what we are. But I feel like this club's at a crossroads at the moment behind the scenes. We don't know what's happening. Even, you know, there's loads of people that are that were supporters of the board that are sort of like, well, hang on a minute, there's a bit of a bit of confusion behind the scenes here. I don't know what's happening. 
you know, it feels it feels a lot more revealing. I was going to say, and I was sorry, I got off track for a bit, but I was going to say there's something I was going to talk about in the daily reports today, but I decided to talk about it during the preview now, and that was Paul Dickov's podcast. I can't remember when it was released. Whether it was, I can't remember what date it was released, but it was a specific podcast, and it revealed some pretty pretty interesting stuff. And he was talking about, I mean, I'm not going to dwell on it for too long, but Paul Dickel said in that podcast um, about the chairman, David Blunt, and about how, you know, the budget went from 12 million under John Ryan to 5 million under him. And he said to lie to the fans about the budget that he had. So, you know, that was a pretty damning statement. Obviously, stories have two sides, so we can't really judge until we know the other side of the story. But... It is a pretty damning statement, and, you know, I think the club should have, if they haven't responded to it by now, I think the club should have listened to things like that and, and come out and express their side of the story and say what they believe to be the truth or what is the truth on their point of view. And I feel like this club's at a real crossroads on and off the pitch. On the pitch, we're sleepwalking to lead two at the moment. Off the pitch, there's confusion, there's don't know what's happening, there's a long-term vision, but the long-term doesn't help the here and now. Are the club thinking, well, you know, we'll try and consolidate League One this year, and if we go down to League Two, sod's law, we've gone down to League Two, we'll try and bounce back up and go from there like we did a few years ago. Because to be fair, when we bounced back from League Two a few years ago under Darren Ferguson, we actually went on the up with Grant McCann coming in, getting us to the playoffs, and then the downward spiral started there again, and we went on this continuous downward spiral where we went up to League One, and it's been a few years. Um, well, actually, no, it came from Championship down to League One again uh, in 2014, and then the reigns took over, and obviously Dickov talked about the takeover and, you know, how he didn't know his budget at the start and things like that. And... You know, there was this whole downward spiral, then it went to League 2, and then we bounced back up, and now we're on a bit of a downward spiral, and we could go to League 2 again next season. It feels like a continuous cycle at the moment, where we're bouncing back to League 1, or bouncing up a league, going on a downward spiral over a few years, over short-term plans, and going to League 2 again. And then, and then hopefully, if, if, we do, if we do go down, we bounce back up again, if we do. So again, it feels like a crossroads right now. That's why the club is so uncertain, I feel. I think that other people feel the club's uncertain. So going on then about the... That was a bit of a, a little talk, sorry about that. Going on about the score prediction. I'm, again, I'm contemplating defeat. I really think I'm contemplating defeat. MK Don's way too good for us. If we don't book up our ideas, it could be five or six again. It could be six. Could, could be another six nil. Could be two six nils in the space of a week. Could be three six nils in the space of a couple of weeks. I'm going to go for, realistically, I think I'm going to give you my head and heart prediction. My head, my head's telling me two or three nil MK Dons. My heart wants it to be either a 1 1 draw or a 2 1 win to us. Or a one, even a one nil win. I'll take a one nil. I'll take a one nil and scrap the rest of the game, just so we get three points on the board. That's what my heart's saying. My head's saying uh, th uh, two or three to MK Dons. Could be even five or six if we make mistakes like we did on Tuesday. So um, I'm going to be safe and go two nil MK Dons, but I could be wrong here. So. Thank you very much, guys, for watching this video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And for now, I'm Aaron Chandler from Forever Football, DRFC, Keatley on the Rover's Life, and that, my friends, full time. Rover's Life died. Thank you very much. Hope to see you at the stadium tomorrow.